a century ago. Yeah. But we had some just really crazy matches there. Um, I want to name some of the players, but life has happened, and those names are not really worth mentioning now. But <laughs> yeah, they were that's, here, that's and they were Midwest upsets, and we were very happy. Uh, uh, excellent timing. As we are about to get started, it's going to be Grenadier versus Yoshi. Like you mentioned, Danny. Rocket the red Yoshi, I love to see it. Uh, but Greninja is such an awkward character. What do you think of this matchup side? This is actually going to be a really awkward one to cast. We see Danny already being able to go in and get a lot of those big confirms, especially with up tilt. Uh, what I would kind of predict is that because Greninja needs to land on you with Nair for like so many of their confirms, if uh, Danny's on the ball and is able to like get up tilt or up smashes instead, things are kind of like fall in their favor quickly. But as far as like actually chasing and catching Greninja, Yoshi doesn't have that much ground speed, so if Watermaster starts playing really defensively, it gets kind of tough. Oh yeah, I can see that defensive aspect being a very big one because you try to go blow for blow for Danny. I feel like you're going to come out on the sour end almost every single time here. So you can see Watermaster slowly slowing down that pace with that Water Shuriken. It may be priority move in the Pokemon games, but here it is used to stall out that Danny Phantasma offense. Yeah, it just controls so much ground space. So you see Danny Phantasma right now had a really strong start, but Watermaster is just playing a really solid spacing game, just isn't overcommitting. Like you said, throwing out those Water Shurikens, and it's just racked up a lot of chip damage. Not a lot of big combos, just because Yoshi's armor probably makes that tougher, but uh, definitely got themselves back in the fight. Ooh, a nice dodge on the Yoshi Farmer. It does get the up smash, but that Yoshi subtractive armor gonna save the stock for Danny Phantasma, but this is still looking frightful as Watermaster is sizing up for the kill, and there goes that there. I'll say this, I fully understand that Yoshi needs that armor to be where he is in the meta, but my thoughts on that armor are not PG-13, <laughs> so I will not save them. <laughs> <But> <laughs> That aside, Danny was able to take that stop with that up smash. A really good read waiting out that spot dodge. And we're back to even. So I'm kind of curious. I like the way Watermaster is approaching this, though. Going for a lot of, like, retreating fares and just trying to stay away from above Yoshi. It looks like he learned that lesson really quickly. But you can only do so much because eventually that dinosaur is going to catch up to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that, you know, Yoshi may have a tough time kind of going across the ground. But that air mobility is nothing to sleep on. One of the top in the game. So uh, if he starts jumping at you, he can get anywhere at any time. It's kind of deadly. Yeah, speaking of momentum, really just kind of like schmoving all over the stage with that egg that was really smart, just making himself really unpredictable. I can see this being a little bit of a slower set because like neither of them are getting like super big combos. We've only really seen the one, and they're kind of just like trading blows back and forth. So it's definitely going to be like a slow paced game of like footsies more than anything. Yeah, it's an interesting dichotomy because Yoshi's kind of an explosive character with, you know, insane combos. Sometimes when they touch you, you're either taking 80 or dying. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, they facilitate such slow games. At least uh, a couple of Yoshi players in my scene, they're often kind of the timeout coefficient um, as you have to play very slow around them. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. And Water Master not really mastering the water, unfortunately. <laughs> Gonna SD on that up. That was rude. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you know, I wanna make I take that back. That wasn't very kind. I shouldn't have said that. But. It's all right. You know, Hydro Pump has an 80% chance to hit, so sometimes we miss. It, it happens. Right. It it's happens. Just, it's just statistics. That's mm. just how math works. Exactly. The math is massive right now. Oh, that is so much damage. No one ever wants to be on the receiving end of that Yoshi down air. It is just a nightmare. An instant, like, 30-ish percent. Yeah, exactly. That's like DLC damage before DLC started getting added to the game. It's nuts if you get hit by all the hits down air there. All right. I have a theory that most characters, if they were DLC, we would hate them. Do you think that would apply to Yoshi? If Yoshi was a DLC character, Yoshi came out in DLC pack 2, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> Gotta check those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... But kind of going back to the DLC comment, Yoshi, I think everybody would hate Yoshi. That subtractive armor would be seen as so DLC. We just, why, does he, why does he do that? Why, why does he, why does he have this? this? And literally, no other character will get out of this. No one else can do that. That's so dumb. Sakurai, why would you, why would you have this? No, yeah, but you're, you're kind of right, yeah, actually. Yeah. But uh, Yoshi has uh, some of the best PR ever. Uh, one, because of Amsa and Melee, and two, whatever Yoshidora is doing to them in Japan, mm -hmm. they have him rated so high on the tier list. I'm like, I really think it's just him putting y'all through the ringer. I really, like, Yoshi's good, but relax. They have him, like, top six. I'm like, are we sure? <laughs> are we Are we okay? I think are you guys just him. <laughs> are you guys good? Oh, yeah, and there it is. Yeah, yeah, gotta, yeah. yeah. That gotta abrupt tech, those. You yeah, gotta yeah. get ready for it. Unfortunate stuff there. All right, going into game two here, and Kalos, a stage I don't see too often, but a very great counterpick. Yeah, I could definitely see this giving Watermeister the advantage as far as just like trying to control space without like 
attempting to smother Danny. Like, this is probably a really good Greninja stage. Plus, he might live a little longer. Yep. Uh, I think Greninja has a wall cling. I might have just made that up. No, no. Ninja-like qualities has the wall cling. I, I believe it. We're six years in, I should know this. But anyway, <laughs> you know, everything can slip the mind at some point. Right, but yeah. I, feel, I don't know. He seems like a like a sticky dude. Yeah. He probably got one. You know, he's got the little suction cups on his fingers. Yeah, which we'll assume he does. Uh, but <laughs> right now, it definitely looks like uh, Watermash just can't really get his footing. He's okay. okay. I like that idea, using the substitution to counter that egg. Um, that was good. Danny was definitely getting away with that a lot in the first game. So you can definitely tell the Watermaster is like, Watermaster is like learning mm -hmm. and like figuring things out in real time. It is insane that you mentioned that Watermaster couldn't find his footing and then proceeded to hit Danny with five foot moves in a row. <laughs> yeah, immediately. <laughs> it's like he heard me talking. Oh, wow. Exactly. And that forward air killing a little earlier than I expected, just considering how heavy Yoshi is and he was at center stage and, mm -hmm. you know, it's Kalos. But uh, maybe the eye just wasn't there. I'm not sure. But either way, Watermaster is definitely going to take that to the bank. And just like we saw in the previous game, just going to really slow it down and just try to go for the projectile war. Yeah, you know. Watermaster most definitely in a position that is very good for Watermaster here. Like, being up a stock against Yoshi means that he has to kind of force the issue. And Yoshi mm -hmm. forcing the issue is not at his strongest. So I'm kind of interested to see how Danny Phantasma kind of plays from behind here. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. He said, stock up, you know the vibes, and hit the taunt oh, yeah. as a bonus? Oh, my goodness. And Danny Phantasma chases down the stock, says, we got to take that stock for that taunt. And the Yoshi Bomber does connect on the second go around. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely turned up. He's like, what, what did you say? Like, <laughs> Greninja said what? Give me one second. Right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Danny's definitely back in there. I love the, uh, I love that he's always falling with a hitbox that Yoshi can't really contest, especially mm. forward air. Yeah. Like, at worst, he trades, but he's not really, like, losing these exchanges, so Water Master's definitely got a good game plan. Um, he is getting a little bit more aggressive, which isn't the worst thing, but yep. I think he was just seeing a lot of success from just camping, so maybe he'll go back to it in a moment. But either way, Danny not going to be mad about it. Finding those up tilts again. Greninja wants to stay in short hop range, and that's that's just an area that Yoshi covers just so easily. So easily. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of the air, Water Master gets sent flying off the top blast zone there, that back air. Going to take your stock if you're you know, holding it too far in. Okay. We're getting started. That forward air is going to be a big combo starter. But Danny, I mean, Watermaster is playing Greninja, who's super slick and very hard to combo. Mm -hmm. That awkward hitbox is starting to come up. You know what? He should change his name to Substitution Master. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. Honestly, he is eating with these counters. I'm not going to hold you. You know, we could even shorten it to Logmaster. You know, <laughs> Logmaster? They, they get it. They get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, same thing, same thing. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, like you said, Yoshi, a very awkward character to combo. Watermaster mm. is finding him, which is really good. Had to kind of go for a down throw reset in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that hyper armor is just kind of weird. He's also at like a weird weight, so it's probably not like... I don't think it's like a bad Greninja matchup per se, but it's probably just a little challenging. It's like oh, a weird 50-50 yeah. is kind of what I would guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which is funny because I feel like there are no weird, there are no not weird Greninja matchups. This character True. just moves so differently uh, among the cast. Like, it's like a sleeper character that if you're not Ooh. used to how they move, you could get done up, and there goes the forward air, up air. Danny Fantasma puts this set away with uh, what I like to call back home the Yonky Spoinky. Yeah, yeah. The, the Yonky, the Yonky Spoinky, <laughs> yeah. for sure. And if I had to guess, Danny just said, hey, don't ever taunt me again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. probably just went back about his business. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Classic, classic. But, yeah, really good start. It looks like they're – and that's that's one thing I love. Like, mm -hmm. Midwestern kindness is kind of a meme, but it's real. It's like, real. You can definitely so tell real. they're just, like, talking about it. I think Danny is – possibly giving some uh, tips for what was going on there. But let's take a look at these replays here. This is right after the taunt. Danny Phantasma was yeah. <laughs> Finds very that angry, guy. very, very ready to find that punish there. I think this is one of the crazy substitutions. Maybe am I wrong? Oh, no, uh, this is uh, this is not that. Yeah, wow. it was just that back air. Yeah, that back air kind of took straight off the top there. Yeah, that was crazy. All right, uh, and there's that a substitution. substitution. Yes, mm -hmm. very smart, very good decision on that. Yeah, and Greninja substitute. Oh, this is actually, I wanted to highlight this. So, after hitting that forward air, that up air is obviously a true KO confirm. You'll see, if you have ever played Yoshi, you know how annoying it can get, be to get hit by that. Mm -hmm. um, because that forward air hitbox is actually so generous here as we kind of slow it down there just a little bit more. It, it yeah. just like connects mm -hmm. so low to the ground. And Greninja, a character who is infamous for being so low to the ground there. Um, 
typically these higher hitting hitboxes, you would be able to kind of like weave and dodge. I know a couple of other like spiking forward airs that would miss in those scenarios, but Yoshi just kind of has that privilege to kind of swing that big old noggin. Look at that nose. <laughs> yeah. All right, look, pause, pause right. Go, go right there. Go back one. Yep. <laughs> look at that nose, dude. Like that's crazy. <laughs> There's so much range on that. That's insane. Yes, the nose goes where it goes. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you, but it, it, it's quite the powerful blow. And then obviously that up air is also such a crooked move too. Yeah. Oh my, yeah, yeah. Listen, I could give you a whole podcast episode on why I hate that up air specifically. The hitbox on it just does not make any, any sense. sense. There's no wrong hitbox. There's no... <laughs> wrong way to do it you just gotta do it but just solid hands it's just well it, it's just it KOs you at like a hundred from the ground and then it it's so giant and ginormous like um uh, like I said I have a bunch of Yoshis in my region one of the things they do that. yeah yeah I know recipes but um <laughs> <laughs> they do is like at like K KO percents they just spam falling up air on the ground because mm. the hitbox above it is so large that it, it kind of reminds me of like older smash games where you could kind of just use landing up airs to kind of catch like short hops or uh, even just empty movement and it, it's a little bit annoying because not many characters get that luxury yeah plus it's got to be like super good on shield too mm -hmm. so you can't really because they could the 